don't know all of that good stuff, Tracy, that Lou just said about me. I pray I live up to their expectations. <laughs> but it is truly an honor to be here. Most of you know that I am Kevin's, I call vaccine person, administrator, and that's what I love to do. Um, just like Apostle, I was a teacher by profession. I just retired last year and um, with Kevin full time. But before I retired, because Kevin retired two years before me, and um, I was praying to God and asking him, if I do retire, you have to show me my purpose in retiring, because all along, I felt I was supposed to teach just like Apostle. I did primary education, and I loved it. I mean, I loved teaching primary school. But as I got promoted into administration, I realized that things was changing. I saw a lot of single women or married women who's going through issues just keep coming to my office. I was dealing with parents, staff members, and I'm like, Lord, what am I to tell these women? I'm not prepared for this. But he was preparing me for six years. Six years I stayed in administration. And when it was time to leave, I knew it was time to leave. And Kevin said, okay, yes, now you're ready to leave. But I just have to honor my husband because, let's give him a hand, <laughs> honestly. is who I am today. So we are not one of those on Facebook apostle who pretending with smile. Our smile is real because I'll row him in the front of y'all. That's how I am. No fake in there. We don't have time for that. We're both realists. And as he teach, you could tell he's a real person. He's a no-nonsense person. But I appreciate him so much because the counsel that he gives me the reassurance that he gives me, the encouragement that he gives me, I never thought I would have received that from any man. And that's why today, you all excuse me, I always get emotional when I talk about it. Because today, you singles are going to see your connection with the Holy Spirit will grant you your heart's desires but you have to be obedient and you have to follow his commandments. Enough crying. <laughs> okay, I did a PowerPoint presentation because I really wanna take my time and I want you to understand. I know sometimes we speak and we go so quickly and sometimes we miss it because sometimes I'm in workshops or conferences and it happens to me. But as you can see, the topics I have there for singles relationship with the Holy Spirit. Y'all read them for me, please. Tracy, come on second. Y'all read it for me, please. Tracy, come on second. Tracy, come. Everybody read it, please. With the Holy Spirit, why is it important for us to experience the Holy Spirit? The role of the Holy Spirit, requirements needed for singles to understand the leading of the Holy Spirit. Obedience is the key to the leading of the Holy Spirit. How to know you are in alignment with the Holy Spirit guidance. Awesome, good. Just give us one minute, please. Let's just go over it again, please. It says, singles relationship with the Holy Spirit. Could read it, read it to hear yourself saying it. Let's try it again. Who is the Holy Spirit? Why is it important for us to experience the Holy Spirit? The role of the Holy Spirit requires the need for singles to understand the leading of the Holy Spirit. Obedience is key to the leading of the Holy Spirit. How to know Yeah. 
Now, let's look at who is the Holy Spirit. Because in order for you to ask, pray, do anything, you must know who the Holy Spirit is and understand who the Holy Spirit is and what's the purpose of the Holy Spirit in your lives so that your life can improve. So as you can see, it has the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. The Trinity is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is not God, Holy Spirit only. It is not Son, God only, but it's the combination of all of them together. Now, sometimes that baffles me too, especially in growing up, because you said, okay, who's the Lord, who's the Father, and then he sent his son Jesus, and then the Holy Spirit is him, but he is all in one. So don't even stress your mind, stress yourself out, oh, I don't understand this. No, know that the Holy Spirit is all of that in one. Okay, why is it important for singles to experience the Holy Spirit? It is important because the Holy Spirit is God's permanent presence within us primarily to lead us all to truth. Do you believe that? Don't just say it if you don't. Do you honestly believe that? Okay, let's prove that. John 14, 16, and 17, it says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world could not receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Okay, could we see the Holy Spirit? Could we see the Father? Could we see Jesus? We don't see him but we can experience him. We will know that he's there to comfort us, but you have to believe that. You just can't give up. And I know as women, we always so quick. Well, for me, I'm short-tempered sometimes. I mean, I met my match with Kevin because he's my cooler, but I inherit this temperament from my mom and from my dad. So I'm spicy, we would call it. Thank you. I'm spicy, but... I had to learn how to trust. It's frustrating. It's overwhelming. Nicole and Apostle, I heard y'all spoke about that intimacy with yourself. Do you know how long that took me to get to that place? I was 42 years old. Had I done that a long time ago, I could have saved myself so many hurts. I was not interested. I wanted to be married, period. Don't tell me nothing else. Don't tell me it ain't impossible. That's what I want. I didn't know nobody at the time who didn't want to be married. And, <clears throat> excuse me, on top of that, all of my friends or family members asking me to stand in their wedding. I don't want to stand in no wedding unless it's my <laughs> wedding. So I walked in every wedding, I'm crying, and I'm like, I couldn't help, I, I kid you not, I always ask God, when will it be my time? What am I doing wrong? I'm going to show you. <laughs> now, that scripture there was when, no, not yet, Lou. <laughs> that scripture there in John 14, 16, 17, I don't know if you remember when Jesus was having the Last Supper with his disciples, and they didn't want him to leave. They were sad that he was leaving. But he told them, I'm going to send another comforter. But we don't believe that. To be honest with you, I was never taught that. I did not know. I know about Jesus, the Holy Spirit and Son, but I didn't believe he was a comforter for me because I was demanding and asking him for things, what I wanted, when I wanted, and because I didn't get it, sometimes I was angry and bitter with God. You know what I say, sin not? I had to repent so much times because in my mind, 
I felt I was just so angry with God. And I'm like, get it right. How you could be angry with the creator who you asking for help? But I can't fake. I was angry. I was honestly angry. I'm at a much better place in my life now. Trust me. But this is what I want you to see. Jesus made that part very, very clear. See, this is going to be the foundation and the basis of everything with the Holy Spirit. He made it clear to them that a comforter was coming. He told them, do not leave Jerusalem until you experience the Holy Spirit. Now, this is Jesus leaving earth telling the disciples what they need to do to make it. I never looked at it like that. When I was studying and asking God, what does he want me to share with the singles? I don't know, it just came the Holy Spirit. And then I start connecting when my change came, when I was 42, and when I surrender all to the Holy Spirit. And I was like, okay, this makes sense. I don't think a lot of persons understand the importance of the Holy Spirit. Okay, the role of the Holy Spirit. The role of the Holy Spirit is to reveal to us what God has already determined for our lives. Do you agree? Yes. You sure you agree? Yes. Okay, well, you're not acting like you agree because you would do better, and we're not doing better, right? It didn't say your parents will determine what happens to you in your life. It didn't say your best friend. It didn't say your siblings. It didn't say your co-workers. It said the role of the Holy Spirit, regardless of what anyone says to you, you may sound stupid to them, they may think you crazy, but you know what scripture tells you. And so you abide by what the Holy Spirit says. Don't worry about what they say. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 10. <clears throat> it says, you can find it on your phone or if you have your iPads, I will read it. But as it is written, I had not seen nor e'er heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, that things which God had prepared for them that love him. But God had revealed them unto us by the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. All this means is that the Holy Spirit reveals everything to you. Isn't that wonderful? The Holy Spirit reveals everything to us. But we have to understand how to be intimate in his presence. Ephesians 1, 3, and 4. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Did it say some spiritual blessings? You don't sound like you're sure. Did it say some spiritual blessings? No, it said all spiritual blessings. According as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So that is telling us way before we even exist. I don't think you all know how much the Holy Spirit loves you. You don't need a man or a woman. In fact, they can never love you like the Holy Spirit loves you. I found that out late. That Holy Spirit is powerful. That love is unconditional. That love is a comforter like none ever before. Requirements needed for singles to understand the leading of the Holy Spirit. 
as with everything in life, there are rules, laws, principles to maintain or manage any type of system. We're here in this room now. Lou and Tracy is having this marriage mechanics. There is a system in place. If the system wasn't in place, this would be dysfunctional. So she has to make sure her cameraman is here, the photographer is here, the person is here to play the music, every, the food is here. It's a system in this hotel. Everything has systems. As Christians, in order for us to work in harmony with the spirit of truth, we must have wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and discernment. Let's think about your job place. Don't the job place have order? Driving in the traffic, there's order and rules and laws you have to abide by, or you could end up in jail. <laughs> Countries that you live in, you just can't go to the prime minister or the president and say, well, I come to sit down and have dinner with you today, what you could do? <laughs> they would lock you up. <laughs> you go to the grocery store, you can't go and just say, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want that, I want this, and walk out the store they will lock you up. Every organization has some form or type of rules and laws. The rules that we abide by in our everyday life, including marriage, everyday life we abide by rules, including in marriage. Now we may not like some of those things, but your everyday life even as a single person, every day. You're abiding by some type of rule. So let me ask you this simple question. Why is it so difficult for you to abide by the rule of God? When you're doing it for mortal people, but you can't do it for the creator of all creations, but you asking him, some begging him, some pleading with him to give you what you want but you're not giving him your all. Is that fair? I'm sure if any of you have children and you would say, I expect better from you. Say they bring their report card home. Your child is normally a B student, but you see all these D, 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 D. You're not going to accept that. You're gonna ground them, punish them. No, when you bring this up to what your potential is, then I will help you. So that's what your father's saying to you. You have to step up. He is not coming to help you until you step up. Proverbs 2, 6 to 7 and 10 to 11. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of the mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth upon sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk upright. You know what a buckler is? He is your shield, man. What we crying for? Why are we crying? And we have the Holy Spirit. We supposed to be walking with our heads up. Hey, don't touch me. Don't talk to me. You better come real if you step in here. <laughs> That's how you have to take that spirit of boldness. It ain't easy. I was there. I'm not telling you all this. I won't even fake and lie to you and tell you it's easy. Let me read 10 and 11. When wisdom entereth into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discernment shall preserve thee. Understanding shall keep thee. Let me be clear. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that only can come from the Lord. Now let me ask you, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, can you touch it? Can you feel it? Can you see it? So what is it? It's spiritual. It is spiritual but you only could get that once you connect spiritually with the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 11, two to three. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, 
the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. I'm going to share a true testimony with me. I briefly shared it to some of you who were there when we had the opening, but when Kevin and I first met. And I share this a lot because I think singles' perspectives are wrong. I think you feel you're going to meet a man, he's going to come perfect, and all is going to be well. You wouldn't buck heads, no challenges. And the reason for that is because you believe because he's your God-ordained spouse that, okay, he's coming set. Newsflash. Not even close. Because I came with baggage. Kevin came with his issues. So I sometimes thought... He was Mike Tyson, and I was the other person. Now, we didn't physically fight, but we argued a lot. I mean, over the simplest things. And I was like, Lord Jesus, this ain't the man for me. <laughs> I say, I, I knew his heart. I knew Kevin has such a genuine heart. So when I saw us bucking like that, that wasn't who I saw when I was sitting down watching him teach. So I was like, what is this, Lord? You know what the Holy Spirit said to me? He said that Kevin was who he was because all of his situation, what he went through, likewise me. I had to now let wisdom, knowledge, understanding, discernment, kick in. So you know what? After I realize what triggers him, and I know it must have reminded him of his previous, then I did different as much as I wanted to choke him. I did different. You know why? Because I knew he was who God sent for me. Because everything what happened it never leaves me. It never left me. I would always hear, he's like this because of what he'd been through. Because I knew he was a good person. And I had my sharp mode in my way too. So if he say A, I say B. He say C, I say D. He say E, I say F. I didn't know how to be submissive. I was 42 on my own. All those years, how do I be submissive to a man when I was doing everything for myself? Uh, my daughter, that's not easy, learning how to be submissive. But we have to. All of us in here have flaws. None of us in here are perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. So tell me why you expect to see a perfect man. You ever really sit and think about your flaws? You ever realize how rowdy you are? You ever realize how you always like conflicts? How you always negative? You can see someone and you just find the negative to say about that person rather than uplifting the person? Your spirit don't even, it draws people away from you because they'll be like, oh, she coming, let's go the next way. Oh, he coming, I want nothing to do with him. That's sad. Because you think you're so good, you're so fine, you're so perfect, and you praying to this God. Who God you praying to? Uh, listen, singers, seriously, y'all have a lot of repenting to do and do it daily because you're not perfect. Thoughts are going to come in your mind. You have to reject those thoughts and ask God for forgiveness. I want to do a little sample here. Tracy, come and Lou, let me tell you what I need you to let Tracy do. Because singles, I'm a visual person. I need you to really get this. When you leave here, I want you to understand you have to connect intimately with the Holy Spirit. Okay, okay Tracy. 
We're going to trust that Tracy keeps her eyes closed, okay? Okay. Oh, sorry. We're going to trust that Tracy keeps her eyes closed. Now, Lou, come up, Lou. Lou is Tracy's spouse, husband. So, should Tracy trust Lou? Yeah. All the time or sometimes? All the time. Or no matter how crazy Lou sounds, right? <laughs> All right. Tracy, keep your eyes closed. Lou is going to ask you to do some things for him. And you just follow his voice. You can stretch your hands out, Trace, just in case you can feel. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lou and Tracy. But all jokes aside, singles, I wanted you to see that because when you do have your spouse, you're gonna bump up. You have to trust the voice of your mate because the Bible didn't say woman, then man. It says the man is, in, is ahead of the woman. That's what it says. So Tracy had to trust Lou. I'm sure Tracy was afraid. She was walking with her eyes closed. She didn't know she would have buck a toe, bump into someone, but she trusted his voice. And I did that example to show you trust the Holy Spirit. You will bump. You will fall, literally. Tracy didn't fall. Lou is very good. <laughs> you will fall, literally, to the ground. Pour your whole heart out and still see nothing. God, don't do nothing. So then you have to ask yourself, okay, what is in me? What is in me that's not right? Because according to what this Bible says, I'm doing everything that's right. I must be doing something wrong. Listen, singles, check yourself. Check yourself, check yourself. But always remember that no matter how many bumps and roads you may have, never, ever, ever, ever remember, I mean forget, that the Holy Spirit will never lead you wrong. Amen. Never lead you wrong. Amen. Let that just sit in your mind for a while. Honestly, it, it, it really took me long to understand that the Holy Spirit would never leave me alone. Obedience is key to the Holy Spirit. Y'all think that's true? As human beings, when we fail to follow the laws of the land, it results in penalties, right? You sure? Yes. When we refuse to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, there could be dire consequences. And you know what some of those consequences are? Just what you're experiencing now. Because you're not following the lead of the Holy Spirit. If you be truthful and honest with yourself, you're not following the lead of the Holy Spirit. Let's look at Deuteronomy 28 and 16. And all these scriptures that I have up and I'm giving you, 
When you go home, really meditate and saturate yourself on it so you can get a better understanding of really who this Holy Spirit is and what you need to do to have that intimacy relationship with him. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I commanded thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Imagine that. Let me read that again. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all things, all his commandments, which I commanded thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if they shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall thou be in the city and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall, th shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle the increase of thy cane and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. Man, why are you all missing all that blessing? That's some good blessings. But you know there's also a flip side. There's always a flip side. Let's look at the flip side. Let's look and see what happens when we disobey the Holy Spirit. Now, this is not what I'm saying. This is scriptures, but in the Bible, that's telling you what will happen if you don't follow the Holy Spirit. Deuteronomy 28, 15 to 19 and 30. But it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of thy Lord to observe to do all his commandment, commandments and his status, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now you tell me, I'm sure you're seeing some curses in your family bloodline. Y'all could change it. Y'all could change it. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. Cursed shall thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of the body, and the fruit of thy land, and increase of thy cane, and the flocks of thy sheep. Cursed shall thou be when thou cometh in, and cursed shall thou be when thy, thou goest out. Look how many curses. You don't want those curses to fall on your future children or children that you may have now. So you have to break it. You have to be engaged or married. This verse 30, I'm, I'm summarizing verse 30, let me say that. In verse 30, what it's telling you is that you could be engaged or you could be married but some other person will be intimate with your mate. Imagine that. The person you thought you were going to marry or the person you are married to, somebody else is with them. You will build houses and other people could come and take it. No, we don't want that curse. When you leave here, we don't want that curse on you anymore. Lou. How to know you are in alignment with the Holy Spirit's guidance. Now let's look at these following points. And it will guide us to determine if you are in alignment with the Holy Spirit. God's timing, renewing of the mind, ab abandoning self-will. That's mean getting rid of your flesh, and several persons talked about that already. 
abandoning corrupt company. Well, let me tell you, company will lead you straight to your grave. I don't care who it is. It may be a family member. If you share with them who you are in Christ, and every time you around them, they're negative, love them from a distance. Not that you hate them. If they need you, you're there to support them. But love them from a distance. They're going to corrupt your mind, and you will not be able to stay focused on the Holy Spirit. Let's look at Ecclesiastes 3.11a. It says, he has made everything beautiful in its time. Not your time, his time. I know how you feel, so I don't want you to feel because I'm married I can say these things. I'm saying these things to you because I didn't get it right until my 40s. Because nobody taught me this. I didn't know these things. So it took me a longer time. We have some young people in here. There's so much hope for them. They could tell them jokers, no, go, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't want you. I don't know too much to settle for this now. I didn't have that. It also says, additionally, there's a season and a time to every purpose under heaven, and that's Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. Romans 12 and 2, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of this, your mind. Then you will be able to test, approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will for you in your life. Renewing of the mind, that's a daily process. You have to daily renew your mind. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and I'm saturating you with a lot of scriptures. I learn from the best. <laughs> Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit, acknowledge him, and he will surely, surely, surely direct your path. He will guide you. He will lead you to your destiny. Sometimes we have to go through the stumbling block. Sometimes we have to bump up. Sometimes we have to fall. He's teaching you something. So when that happens, say, okay, Lord, what is my teachable moment in this? Why did this happen? What did I, did I do something wrong, or am I just supposed to learn something from this? 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Do not deceive bad company corrupts good character. It's right there in the Bible. So don't feel bad when you have to cut off your friend who you've had for 15 years. Because once you explain to them, listen, this is where I'm at in my life. Every time we hang out, you're doing the same thing. I'm not into going to bars. I'm not into going to the club. You, I'm not into hearing no cursing around me. I'm not into meeting this one and that one. And if this is who you are, I cannot hang out with you anymore. I still love you. I'm here for you if you need me. But you have to be real because you, you, you can't be living a double standard life. You're in and you're out. You're in and you're out. But yet you want the same God to just stay in. But you're in and out. You're ducking, you're dodging. That's not fair to him. That is not fair to him. I'm going to give a true testimony with Kevin and I have said it before as singles I really really want you to listen to it because I'm sure some of you are going through it when I was single I had multiple spirits multiple spirits inside of me I saw them all. Then you're living in the world, so you don't even care no more. So you're promiscuous, you're frustrated, you're anxious, you're bitter, you're lonely. You allow all these spirits to come in. Tell you, it, 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 it overtakes you. 
Sometimes you feel like just screaming. I had enough. I can't take it. I can't do this no more. But you know, I knew that I wasn't fully giving God my all in that whole process. I knew that. So why should I expect any better from him? It's almost like I was saying, I'm going to show you. I don't have time for this. You're taking too long. And so I just lived. Honestly, I lived. I had a wonderful, I considered it wonderful then. Not realizing how I was damaging my life. When that reality hit me, and I thought about my daughter repeating that same cycle. Man, I was on my knees. I repented. I told God, I don't want this pass on to my child. Don't punish her for what I have done. But then there was things I had to do. Why should he favor me and just do that? Because I say that when I don't want to live according to his word. That's not fair to him. Listen, I had to learn how to have a personal relationship with God. I didn't even know how to do that. I did not know how to do that. I started to go to Bible study Kevin was having. True story. My first, my mom used to go a lot, and she says, Kevin, say, come out to Bible study. God has a blessing for you. You know what I was saying? Tell Kevin, don't mess with me. What do you want me to come to Bible study for? What blessing God had for me? I kid you not. My mom used to look at me like, this is a crazy girl. <laughs> at the time, Kevin wanted nothing with me. He said, when we did start a dating, he said he just kept hearing God had something special for me. So he would tell my mommy every Tuesday I would not go. I would row her. You would think, you'd think she did something to me. And one night I just went, and I started listening. But every time I go, when he would teach, and it felt like he was looking at me, I would do this. <laughs> I felt because I saw him in action. I saw him prophesy to people, and, and Kevin is tell you exactly what's going on. And I was like, Jesus, these people could know what's going on with me. So when he looked, I would do that. I say, don't let him see. And even when we, we started it, he said, why every time I look at you, you would do this? I was so nervous going to that Bible study, but I never stopped. I didn't have no likings for him. In fact, when the persons was trying to say connect us, I was like, mm, uh -uh. <laughs> When I tell you Kevin was so deep in that word and I was green, I was like, what are you do with me? I said, I'm not on that level. I say, and I like to have fun. He look like he boring. <laughs> I keeping it real. I say that to tell y'all, listen, I would have missed out on the blessing what God had for me. Because y'all think y'all will see a jokester. Y'all don't see half of it. The places this man took me on our island when we were dating, I haven't seen them all my life. There were three men in my life from the age of 20 till I um, was 42 when I met Kevin. And with them, I thought I was going to marry them because I believed in long-term relationships. That's how I was because I had a child. I didn't want to introduce her to different men. In fact, when, when I meet you, she ain't coming. You ain't gonna know until like six months to almost a year. And I know that, hey, there's a possibility. And then, so when it don't work, it breaks me because I didn't introduce this little girl to someone who I thought was my future. The three of them combined don't make one a Kevin. I had a lady, that's Dr. Susan Wallace, who prayed with me. She could have tell me all the spirits that were in me. In fact, my mom and my mom Took me to her, because she must be saying something wrong with this crazy girl. Something, something wrong with this, my child. <laughs> and so the old lady said, and she's very powerful, Kevin loved her. She said, I need to share something with you, but do you want your mother here? And I was already 24, so I wasn't a baby. So I said, no, let her go. I don't want you to say nothing in front of her. 
And what that woman told me, man, she blew me out the ballpark. She knew the spirits I had. She was that powerful. It blew my mind. Another thing I didn't know, and I say this to the young people, because we have a few in here, know that anytime you have sexual, and for the ones who may not know, sexual intercourse with someone, their spirits connect with you. So when you go to number two, you take in all of that. When you decide to go to number three, you take in all of that. I did not know these things. I wasn't taught this. I didn't know no spirits would be attached to me. In fact, I thought it was crazy when I heard it, but it's true. So that took some serious cleansing. But let me tell you, I'm a living testimony that God exceeded. I mean, he, he exceeded my expectations of him tremendously. I only asked for certain things. He gave me far more once he saw I was ready. I was 42, but ready. You don't have to wait that long to be ready. You don't have to be long, wait that long. I learned to accept and understand the abundant life that Christ had to offer to us. It was not easy. I had to humble myself. I had to release that flesh. Let me tell you, this flesh is something else. But I had to do it in order for better. And to be honest with you, it wasn't just about me. It was for my daughter. Because I heard of generational curses. I didn't know the details of them, but I could see certain things in families and know that, okay, this has to be a generational curse. I didn't want anything to pass on to her because then it would pass on to her generation and it would continue. Listen, I'm telling you, your relationship with Christ is so personal. That's between you and him. He guides you. He leads you. He protects you. He teaches, he motivates, he comforts, and so much more. I'm sure you can say so much more. There's absolutely no relationship you can be in that would be more loving and comforting than your Holy Spirit. I know I'm saying those things over and over because I want you to get it. Let's look at Exodus 34 and 14. For thou shalt worship no other god, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. He's jealous. So he ain't checking for you. He wants you to serve him. He, he is just waiting on you to say, Father, I surrender all. He's waiting for you to do that. So he can say, okay, come, my baby. I was here all this time. Don't be deceitful singles. Don't be fooling yourself. Don't pretend like God doesn't know what you're doing. Or you say, okay, I'm going to go and do this tonight. And then I say, I just say, God, forgive me before I go to bed. No, man, you're playing. Like they say, you're trifling. <laughs> I want you to ask yourself this question. Are you a child of God or are you a child of Satan? Which one? Because there's no middle ground. There's no in between. You're not halfway in and halfway out. It's either either or or. You don't even have to accept it, but it is what it is. It is what it is. Obey the laws. Obey the laws. You must obey the laws. Accept yourself for who you are and all the shortfalls, man. Sometimes I should be like, what? Am I too dark? What? What it is with me? Why I meet people and then they hurt me? What is it? Am I too soft? Am I giving too much? What is it? All this time I was not connected with the Holy Spirit. Asking for these things, was not getting these things, being frustrated I'm not getting these things. 
and I didn't know what to do. We are all in here fearfully and wonderfully made by the Creator. I used to always think something has to be wrong. I would have people tell me, boy, you're a beautiful dark girl, but you're too picky. I wasn't picky. My prayer to God was I wanted, and this is after I got connected with the Holy Spirit, I wanted who you have for me. I never asked God for that before. I completely changed my prayer line. I say, who you have for me, I will obey. And then I added some other things. Be specific with God now. Because I'm telling you, I got that and more. Be specific with God. He's the creator of all creations. Now, before I close, I want to give some scriptures, and I need you to just take everything out of your head and allow these scriptures to convict you. Let it saturate in your mind. John 14, 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. So you may say you love God, but if he ain't manifesting himself to you, something wrong. Something is wrong. Matthew 6.33, seek the kingdom of God above anything else. Live righteously. And you know what the last part say? He will give you everything you need. Not some things, not one thing. Everything you need. Remember these scriptures, singles. It's important. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive it and ye shall have them. You must believe once you surrender all to God, once you invite the Holy Spirit in, that whatever you say, you will receive it. Because the scriptures say that. So you bring him back to his word. Your word says. And if it isn't happening, check yourself, man. You're doing something wrong. God is not a God that he would lie. He's a God of order. So it cannot be the scriptures lying to you. It has to be you. And you have to be real about it. Joel 2, 25 and 26. This explains the rewards of repentance. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the, the palmer worm and great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord our God that has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. How much times you have been ashamed? You know how much times I was ashamed? My goodness. And with me back then, when I was stressed, depressed, because this so-called dude leave me or, or, or betrayed my trust, I was head and nobody. So I looked like this. So immediately... I'm not eating. You can see that, oh, my God, what's wrong with her? She's sick. I used to be devastated. That, that thing, true story, I had to learn how to forgive my little girl dad. That was not easy for me. It took me three solid years. No joke. No joke. But I'm telling you, women, we, we spiteful. You cannot be spiteful. We have to learn to forgive. I was young then. I didn't know better. I know better now. Had I known it then, I would have done things differently. But now you have all this knowledge. You, have, you were amongst great speakers. You have to keep it real with yourself. Let me tell you, forgive, forgiveness unlocks the door to so many blessings. You have to forgive. Yes, there's no if or ands about forgiveness. I want us to read a prayer. Y'all are going to be the first 
to read the Singles Prayer in Kevin's book that is coming out this month. His prayer book, and he has in there a prayer for singles. But before I do that, I just have to reiterate again, emphasize again, the importance of the Holy Spirit. Because without him, your life is dormant. Just ask the Holy Spirit to take the scales of your eyes. Wake up, singles. How many more years are you going to go like this? Wake up. Let's go, Lou. Uh -huh. This is the prayer. Can you see it? Because I need you to pray it. Y'all are the first to read the prayer for the singles in the book that will be coming out shortly. So let's go, Heavenly Father. Re stop, let's stop, let's stop, let's stop. Hold on, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Stand up. Everybody stand, 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 stand. Now read this prayer like you believing you're going to receive something at the end of this prayer. This ain't no joke. This is not a joke. Now, if you come here expecting something from this conference and you believing, there are times I didn't know how to pray. I wish I had someone to have some prayers for me to pray. I didn't know the words what to say. So let's read the prayer like you believe this is going to happen to you. Let's start again. Open door policy that all need to approach you from at any time. Lord, the word says, if we hide our sins, we shall not prosper. Proverbs 28 13. At this point, Father, I am now on the table and I confess and repent of all violations I have committed against your laws. I believe by faith that not only have you forgiven me, but you have also tossed my sins into the sea of forgetfulness. According to Genesis 2 and 18, you have made it clear that it is not beneficial for us to be alone. You also mentioned in Ecclesiastes 4 and 9, two are better than one, because they are not good for the reward from their labor. Lord, I find my faith to another word, asking you to direct. You're getting weak. According to Ephesians 1, 3, 4. Help me to prepare myself for your best. Assist me in not being conformed to this world. Instead, I want to be transformed by the renewing of my mind so that I can now prove and identify that he is a good and acceptable person you have reserved just for me. Romans 12, 2. Go ahead. No, you're not done. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all know Kevin prayers are long. Go ahead. I have made the decision to follow your protocol that will assure me you will direct me in the right direction. You said that I must trust in you with all my heart, lean not to my own understanding, and in all my ways I must acknowledge you, and now you Five, six. By faith, I receive your promise to lead 
Amen. Amen. Now, I want you to say this protocol of Romans 12 and 2. And repeat after me, only if this is what you believe. I have made the, the decision, repeat that, I have made to follow your protocol that will assure me you will direct me in the right direction. You will direct me in the right direction. You said that I must trust in you with all my heart. You said that I must trust in you with all my heart. Lean not on my own understanding. Lean not on my own understanding. And in all my way I must acknowledge you. And you will direct my path. And you will direct my path. Thank you. Amen. You've got the victory singles. You've got to believe it. There's a song when I was preparing for this teaching and I went to Kevin. And I say, this reminds me of my Grammy. I used to call my Grammy Mommy. And I loved her unconditionally. She was like my second mom. And when I was, when I was done preparing, it's a very old school song. I don't know, some of you may know it, but the song is, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. And I don't know where that song came from, but man, I just want you to listen to it. Tracy's going to play it. Just the first stanza of it. Thank you again. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just to take him at his word and just to rest upon his promise just to know the saints the Amen. You may be seated. It is indeed a pleasure and a privilege to be here with you wonderful people. I am so impressed uh, with what I'm seeing here. I want to thank God for the previous presenters, uh, Apostle Didi, uh, the Taylors. We weren't here for the Humphreys, but I'm sure we'll see the video. <laughs> Yeah, listen, the devil fought us every step of the way on this trip. And I don't know if it's principalities we're dealing with or what, but 
It was just one thing after the next. I want to give a resounding applause for my awesome wife. Oh, she was, yeah. Yeah. I thought she did an ex outstanding yeah. job. Yeah. I was really impressed with that, Deidre. That was really, really good. I'm going to reward you later for that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop singles in here. <laughs> yes, but all of the presenters thus far, I mean, their material was very, very good. One of the things I would suggest to everyone that's listening is to, in listening to the presenters, do your best to break away from tradition. Let me tell you something, nothing could set you up more than tradition. That set way of thinking that have nothing to do with God. And you find a lot of that way of thinking originate from the church. A lot of things that they tell you that sounds holy. But the reality is it sets you up. And I'm just going to jump straight out the blocks. You are told to go look and pray for a Christian man and woman. The biggest error ever. And here's what I mean. Follow me. If God already dealt with us in terms of what we're supposed to have before the foundation of the world, that means he would have full knowledge of whom he has selected for you already. Your church is telling you to pray for a Christian. But how do you know he or she is going to be a Christian when you meet them? And this is serious to think about because you will turn down God's best because it does not meet the criteria of your church or your apostle or your pastor or your bishop. And then you find out later when you would have married them that this is Satan child right here. Right. Right. And it really leaves you in a tailspin because you know what you're going to say? I fasted. I prayed. I went to all of the, the uh, prayer groups and all this other stuff and woman dawad loose and kung fu, all this other stuff. All that you did. So how is it? How is it? Why would God allow me to walk into this trap? He didn't allow you. He didn't. Your mind was so, your idol was tradition. Your commitment was, this is how Grammy did it. This is how pastor did it. This is how apostle did it. Even though you see the carnage of their decision. Man, if that ain't bondage, then someone explain what bondage is, man. And I see it all the time. I know a guy back home, right, a preacher. He was married three times. And his church was one of those churches where he puts everybody together and every last one of them divorce. But yet everybody's still seeking his counsel. Oh, pastor, apostle, who should we marry? This is the one God. What God show you? The only time I won't go to him is how to feel. <laughs> if I want to be an expert loser, that is who I go to. Because you have clearly proven yourself that that's what you are. So I'm telling you out of the get-go, if you, if you don't shut down tradition, if, if you still go in this holy-than-thou nonsense... You are bound. You are bound to not only connect with the wrong person, but to connect with the devil's best. That person come to turn your life upside down. That person, when they are done with you, is going to secure a divorce in the end and then put you on to the next person. By the time you do catch yourself, you've done four or five marriages in. But yet you still don't want to let go of tradition. Anyway, that's my opening. <laughs> so today, my teaching is going to be, here we go. My teaching today, my topic is, how well do you know me? How well do you know me? Give me one second. Okay. Okay. How well do you know me? So this teaching is all about basically what I just said. And to be honest with you, it's very difficult to determine who's the person for you. You know, but God has chosen someone for you. There's no ifs, ands, and what about it. The Bible says in Genesis 24, 
it says that God had appointed a wife for Abraham's son Isaac. So much so that uh, Abraham made his servant put his hand on his thigh and swear that you would follow the specific instructions. The servant was so committed and so afraid that he wanted to get it right. Even when he got there, he said, go out, this is what's going to happen. All right, I'm going to go to this well. All right, and whoever come to me first to help me and feed these horses and stuff, let that be her. Because he was convinced that there is a specific person for Isaac, but he was also convinced he was incapable of determining who she was. Because he would do like most of us. Tall, dark, handsome, bow leg, you know. <laughs> you know, sometimes when we look at our younger days and the stupid choices we made or frivolous nonsense. I mean, you like a poison because they like bow legs could provide for the future. <laughs> right. No, not zero. I, I just never... I just never understood that. So there was an appointed, I don't know why this is starting, give me one second. There was an appointed wife for Abraham's. Okay, you know what, I'd forget this. Let me, this is the devil again. Here we go. Okay, right, so there was an appointed wife for Abraham's son, Isaac. And it was important that Isaac must connect with this woman because God made a promise to Abraham. And that promise was secured throughout the bloodline of Abraham. Now I want to stop right there because the same principle operates on the other side of life. Just how God could secure that promise through this particular bloodline, Satan also has a plan. And he's going to do whatever it takes to get you to connect with what's going to make your life a living hell. But it's never going to appear that way in the beginning. Never. They're going to come with the collar. They're going to come with the long robe, 600 crosses on them, all the works. They're going to act super holy. I don't normally watch rated R movies. Glory be to God. <laughs> you know, hallelujah. Whenever you see that extra stuff, Run, 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 run. See, because when you're real, you can be real. All that extra stuff, we don't need none of that. We don't need that. So today, we're going to deal with how well do you know me. And our subtopic, in terms of looking for that mate, or how we're going to know this mate, we're going to have to do what we call a forensic search for them. See, I ain't playing with y'all today. <laughs> I ain't playing with y'all today. I pull out all my big words today. <laughs> now, let me see the hands of all the singles in here. Good. All right. Now, every single that has held up their hand, I want you to tell me two most important things that you seek in a mate. And they can be anything, whatever your choice is. And anyone can answer first, it doesn't matter. The two most important things, if you, right now, if there are two things that you demand, you require, your mate must have for you to know or more than likely uh, date this person permanently to be married to them. What would those two things be? Christian and Christian. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Anyone else? Beautiful. Anybody else? Hmm? Fair as God. All right. Anyone else? You have to be safe. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? 
Don't be shy. I mean, you, 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 you are tailor making this guy or this lady. Right. 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 Makes sense. Right. Makes perfect sense. A leader. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, good. I have another question for everyone that has answered me. Are these things in yourself? Yes. Yes. Not always. Not See, see now, now it's going to get real now. You see, because we all have these great expectations of what we want. And more than likely, we don't have these things within ourselves. So we demand that you come and put all this merchandise, all this precious jewelry and treasury stuff on the table. And they say, oh, but you bring it. Well, I bring it me. <laughs> what does that mean? Right. Now, there are two people mentioned the word heart. I think it was. I want to just go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 31. 21, sorry. Matthew 6 and verse 21. Matthew chapter 6 verse 21 says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. But listen, we're going deep today, yeah? Yeah, because I'm going to give you the steps to finding the right mind. And it has nothing to do with the externals. It has nothing to do with the only time the externals will play a part is when you're doing forensic search to see how those externals match with the heart. You're going to learn that a person's heart, and this is what we need to be looking at, the heart of this person is truly and really their character. So that's what we ought to be looking for, character. One of the beauties of a character, you can only disguise it for so long. Because it speaks on you even when you didn't plan to. So if a person is, you ever met a guy like that? Tall, dark, handsome, say he loves God. And one day he got angry and he just fired those F words all over the place. Oh, I don't normally do this. <laughs> you don't normally do this. You did it so expertly just now. You don't normally do this. <laughs> right. Right. Plenty, too. Plenty. But, but let's look at what scripture says about that. He says, he said it was out of the abundance. Yeah. So this liar is telling me this just slipped. But the scripture is telling me due to the overflow of what's in your, your character. This is you. But we don't read the Bible, so we wouldn't know all of that. So we don't read the Bible because we're still looking at the bullets. We're still looking at the jerry curls. We're still looking at everything else that will fade away in time. <laughs> if we zoom in on character, and because character is being emitted from the heart. So the scripture says in Matthew 6.21, it says, Wherever, where a man's treasure, the word treasure is those things that are precious, those things that are valuable. Wherever man's treasures, there will his heart be. So this is interesting because when you hear the word treasure, you're thinking ruby, you're thinking gold, you're thinking diamond. No. Treasure is what's valuable to them, which will also mean, because it's coming from the heart, hate, bitterness, unforgiveness, pride, all being emitted from where? The heart, which manifests into their who? Character. I'm trying to help you out. So this is what we ought to be looking for. Not looking for a seven-figure job, paying this person something. Not looking for tall, dark. Remember, you are about to sign on to live with this person. You are about to do life with them. So he says here, for where your treasures, there will your heart be also. Watch this now. Matthew 12, 35. A good man, he's going to go a little deeper now. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart, bring forth things that are good. 
And an evil man, out of the evil treasures of his heart, what does it do? It brings forth things that are evil. So what he's saying that no matter what this person is telling you, you cannot be telling me you're a man of God and you love Jesus. And the first date we went on, you're trying to get in my pants. Now make up your mind, Jesus or Jesus? Because they smell alike. <laughs> right. So right there, with this knowledge now, that, that should tell you right away, as much as you like this person, as much as you're attracted to them, if, if they would make me so special that they're only doing this with me. You're not special. Anybody get in their company, they're trying to get on them the same way. And all of this, my mother always told me, Kevin, a little could tell you what a lot is going to be like up the road. Whatever they're displaying to you now, there's a lot more where that came from. So he says, a good man out of the good treasures of his heart bring forth things that are good. And an evil man of the evil treasures of his heart bring forth things that are evil. So let's go now here to Matthew chapter 7. And watch this now. We're going to read from verse 16 to verse 20. Matthew chapter 7, verse 16 to verse 20. Listen to what it says. Jesus come on the block. You shall know them how? By their fruit. Right. And what is the fruit? Character. That's who they are. Yes, you know something? I, I just find it so amazing. When we really love people, how we become their defense attorney? Yeah, no matter what, someone could come to you, but you know he's a rapist. No, no, no. The Spirit spoke to me about him. He's not a rapist. At least not anymore. Right. And they go on this defense because this is who they like. So what are they really doing? Well, what they're really doing is that, God, whatever your plans are, put it over there, please, because I need to be hearing this right now. This is what I want. I've been waiting on this long enough, and I'm going behind this. But at the same time, what you did is you're signing the contract for disaster. So he says, a good man, sorry, he says, you shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes or thorns or figs or thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Now, he's talking about consistency here. Because, of course, there are trees that will bear bad fruit. But this cannot be a good tree from the root, and every time it produces, it's producing something opposite to what it is. So verse 18 says, A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. So the, the rule, that's what it is, it's telling you, in your time with this male or female, they've been producing nothing but horrible fruit. Cut it off. Why are you still entertaining this? It's like playing with fire. Then Jesus comes back again in verse 20. Watch what he says. Exactly what he started out in verse 16. Wherefore, by their what? Fruit or character, you shall know them. So here's what I like about this. I don't need to know you. I need to know nothing of you. In fact, just be you and I'll just observe. I'm just going to observe. You don't need to know what I'm looking for. You don't worry about none of that. Because based on the rules that I'm reading here, you are talking on yourself and don't even know. So don't come around me talking nonsense or, you know, uh, you know I read the Bible three times per year. You, you are aware of that. No, and I don't care either. <laughs> right. So he says, you will know them by their fruit. So you should be in search of what? Fruit. And what type of fruit? Consistent fruit. Can't tell me to send money to the homeless people over there in Africa or wherever, and you hate to see poor people suffering, and you don't give people right in your vicinity anything. What are you talking about? I think I fall off the idiot truck. <laughs> <laughs> so fruit equals character. And that's what you ought to be looking for, character. You don't look for someone who is popular, who is well-known, who is... I, listen, I, I meet with so many single ladies in counseling. And I ask them the same question I ask you all. And a lot of my... They would say to me, well, I'll say, well, what you, what you looking for in a person? Well, you know, I'm looking for a man of God. Here we go again. <laughs> 
But I cannot blame them because this has been ingrained in their cerebral. This is, to them, they feel they're impressing me by telling me this. Like, Kevin is going to look at me as a good, decent woman. I don't care. This is your life. I don't have to live this. You're going to marry this clown, not me. You got to live with this. So it will be in your best interest to be real with you. It will be in your best interest to look at the fruit in this brother so you could get a preview of what you're about to get into. So telling me you want a man of God and all this foolishness, the only person you're deceiving is you. To try that man of God talking nonsense. So how do we look for these things? Well, we look for it forensically. Now, this is where I get educated. So forensic. <laughs> forensic. What does it mean? It means related to, sorry, relating to the application of science, scientific methods and techniques to the investigation of crime. So let me tell you what that means. And I love it. I, I love to watch forensic science. I, I'm a freak for that, all right? So I might use sometimes, but you know, lost you a little bit, but you know, hang with me. <laughs> so let's say a murder was committed here. There was no cameras to record who did it. There was no audio. There was no pictures. There was the, just the dead body here. However, there was a shoe left here. There was a cigarette butt and there were some hair samples. So forensic science is taking these little pieces and putting them together. Boom. The shoe, the cigarette, this hair, this is Deidre, right? So what do we do now? What do we do now? We now, we now forensically, we forensically go and study the life of Deidre. So what do we do? We get a court order to get access to her emails. All right, all of our files on a computer because what we're trying to is create something of how this put right. So we get a cell phone number because we want to know when she made her calls if it pinged from the saddle, the cell tower that was nearest here. Right, y'all got me, y'all watch it too. So, <laughs> right. So forensic science is taking everything involved in creating a scene of the people that we did not see commit this crime. Coming? So this is what we're about to do right now. We're going to forensically look at a person and make our assessments, not based on the aesthetics, not based on cosmetics, not based on superficial stuff, but based on the laws, the rules, and the principles of scripture we're going to use to determine and not trick ourselves that this is not the poison for me. Or maybe it is the poison for me, all right? Okay, so, with that said, I want us to go to Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 to 30. Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 to 30. Okay, Matthew chapter 19. Okay, Matthew chapter 19, verses 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So this is a rich guy, and he's asking Jesus, what is it that I need to do to inherit eternal life, to spend eternity with the master? So keep that in mind because the entire context of what we're talking about here, Jesus, that is, is securing eternal life. So watch this. Verse 17 of Matthew 19. And he said unto him, which is Jesus, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments, right? He said unto him, which, meaning which commandment should I keep? Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor. Listen, verse 20. The young man said unto him, <laughs> All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lackest thou? What did I lack? Now let's go back to the original question. Master, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus now gave him a list of what he should be doing. Because remember, according to him, 
That's just like a man or a woman telling you they love you. They want to marry you. They want to spend the rest of their life with you. So Jesus is about to prove forensically that this guy is a liar. I want you to follow now. So verse 20 says, The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up, what lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, listen, go and sell what thou have and give it to the who? Poor. And what's going to happen? And thou shalt have treasures in heaven and come and follow me. Because you just asked. You just said to me, Jesus that is, you said to Jesus, what should I do to get eternal life? Follow the Ten Commandments or whatever. He said, okay, fine, that's not right. I do all of these. So he says, okay, so sell your stuff and give it to the poor. And then, because this, this, is, this is a nugget right here because, you know, I always preach about the poor. And he's saying that whenever you have the poor, you're storing up treasures in heaven. That's what the scripture is telling me. That's what I'm reading here. Watch this now because homeboy just asks. He just asks how he can get to heaven because he can show you now, but in my heart, he don't know heaven no more. See that I have to do this. So we get to see where his heart really is. Watch this. Verse 21, Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell, that, and sell that thou hast and give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasures in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, <laughs> oh boy, he, he went away, so what? Uh-uh. Sell and be a regular? What? Oh, you will keep your heaven. <laughs> Let's stop a second. Let's look at some principles now. Look how we forensically looking at the heart. See, this is what we're looking at now. See, I don't need to put you on a 21 question list, bro. You showing me what you dealing with internally. You say you want this, you say you want that. But when I lay those real questions out to you, I'm forensically assessing you. So I don't need to be dating you no more. I don't need to see you no more. Because you're telling me, because in these are people who say, well, I really love Jesus. You know, and I have the Holy Spirit every 30 seconds. You know, that's all good and well. But when such questions are put to you, of course the benchmark being the Holy Scriptures, you get to see, you get to see their heart. Their heart is on display, and they don't even realize it. And that's why I said to you in the opening of this uh, teaching, you cannot hide character, no matter how much you try to. No matter how much you try to, it will always tell on you. So this scripture is now proving to us forensically that this guy who claims to want to get to heaven, who claims to want to have eternal life, who seemed to be a good person on the outside. But when Jesus asked him to help people that are less fortunate than him and to sell his good so that he would secure a greater treasure in heaven, he says, no. No, man, I, I ain't doing that, Jesus. You need to go find some other fool who can do that. I ain't doing that. Okay, the next one. Why should we focus on the heart? Because this is now how we're going to determine whether or not these are the people that we should uh, continue our friendship with, our relationship with. And again, I'm talking to the singles because, trust me, I wish someone had told me these things when I was coming up. You know, but I came up, and, I, and that's why I'm so against it, I came up under a church tradition, man. Jesus, man, nothing can keep you in bondage more than that. You will never excel. You will, there's always this in-house competition, and you can't go above the power. To, to me, I, I, I think hell is easy compared to some of these places. No, I have to say this because you... This is how I am. I love to bring out the potential of the people. I love to see people excel. But on the flip side, there are people who take pleasure in keeping their foot on you. Uh, I, 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 the Lord didn't release you. <laughs> Glory be to God. All this release, all this... What man, listen... Jesus says, go into the world, preach my gospel. Why all these hurdles? Why all this jump, skipping all this foolishness? See, and when you commit more to these things, you don't realize it. These things are becoming idols to you. These things are becoming traditional. And what is the law of tradition? Jesus said, because of your tradition, 
the word of God, the promises of God will never ever manifest in your life. It took me a while to get that, but when I did, listen, I ran for my life. So let's go to why we should focus on the heart. Let's go to Genesis chapter 6 verse 5. Genesis chapter 6, and we're going to read verse 5. Listen to what it says. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every and that every imagination of the thoughts of his what? Of his heart was what? Only evil what? Continually. Consistent. So based on that statement, can we label such a poison as a good poison? No. See, when you meet people, trust me, they have an agenda. And they're going to become who you want. And I say this to people all the time. When you meet people, tell them very little about yourself. You have a lot of what I call, not scammers, but scanners. They scan everything you're saying. So, so tell me about you. What, what all do you like? Well, I like to read and walk the beach, you know. <laughs> you know, and I, uh, you know, I like sunsets. Yeah. So this joke is going to become that. You, you, you said walk the beach? Listen, Hollywood ain't got nothing on these people, yeah? <laughs> I, I'm telling you, they are well skilled. So they become, they, be, they are skilled. They, listen, if, you, if God was to open their life up to you, listen, you, you, you would shoot them in front of you. I'm telling you, because they have done this to everybody. They, they find pleasure in playing games, and it's almost as if they're playing chess or checkers with someone's life. You don't, you don't want that. So the Bible is saying here that, This evil is in man's heart continually. Let's go to Genesis 8 verse 21. So Genesis 8 and verse 21 says, And the Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is what? Evil. From where? His youth. Neither will I again smite. Well, anyway, what he's saying is that the evil in man's heart didn't start the day that you figured out he was evil. So what I'm saying is that a lot of people are perfectionists at evil. They're not feeling to be evil. Just like a liar. A liar doesn't feel to tell a lie. A liar can stare you right in the face and tell you a lie. Make you believe something that's not true. Listen, I know we just started dating, and I hate to do this. I feel so embarrassed right now. Remember, I run into some troubles, man, and I need $600. I'm going to give it to you. I promise you tomorrow. Tomorrow you're going to get it. You know what? Forget it. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do this, man. You know what? But I need it. I really need it. By the time, yeah. Yeah. See but, see, but at this point, when they would have done that, they knew you already hook, line, and sink up. See, they're not going to do this in the beginning. They're going to make sure you, they already hook you. They already got you in because now you just, they're just feeding you at this point. And I'm telling you this because they have some real people who have no conscience. Deceitful, wicked, devils. So let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verses 25 to verse 26. So Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 25 says, I applied my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things. This is Solomon speaking. And to know the wickedness of folly or foolishness, even of foolishness and madness. And I, which is Solomon, find more bitter than death. Listen to this. What he found more bitter than death. What I found more bitter than death was the woman whose heart not her foot, not her finger, not her elbow, not her calf. Her heart. Why? Because that's the center base of her entire being. He says, a woman whose heart is snares and nets. What is a snare? Trap. Snares and nets. And her hands as bands. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape her. So imagine those who ain't pleasing God. 
You think she can look this way in the beginning? You think he can look this way? You think he can look like a devil in the beginning? No. No, he can look nice, he can behave nice, and he can talk nice. And tell you truly, when he figured the game was already over, or she already got what she want, now you begin to see the true them. Let's go here to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5 and verse 3. Acts chapter 5 and verse 3 says, But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan, listen, filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Now, I found this to be so interesting when I read this, right? What, again, these are biblical rules, laws, principles. What is the scripture telling? Okay. Can Satan put nonsense in your heart? Yes. Do you have to do it? No. So, no matter how wicked he is, who makes the ultimate decision to do good or bad? You. But that all be dependent on how much either party has convinced you. So when I read that, I thought I was so, so, so deep. So let me, let me give you another follow-up one with that. Let's look at John chapter 13, verse 2. John chapter 13, verse 2. John chapter 13, verse 2 says, And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Now, even though he put it in his heart, the devil couldn't make him do it. He had to make the ultimate decision. Kevin, where are you going with this? When the devil come out of poison, he's only coming to work on what's already there. Let me give you a perfect example. A straight man who loves women will never be attracted to the same sex. The devil will never come and tempt him with that. So whenever he shows up, He's only coming to build on foundation that's already in place. I'm trying to help you. So watch this now. This is why the scripture says to us, let's go to Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. Listen to what it says. It says, keep thine heart with what? All diligence. Why? Because out of it comes the issues of life. What was the issues of life for Judas Iscariot? He betrayed Jesus. Ended up hanging himself. What was the issues of life with Ananias and Sapphira? Lied to the Holy Spirit and they were killed. But in both cases, the devil couldn't make them do it. They had to make the decision. But nevertheless, the devil showed up with such... Great convincing words because he knew already they had issues going on. And it was just a matter of time. So why am, I, why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because if you're that person, that single person, and this is why I open up the statement with this too. You're saying, oh Lord, I pray that you send me a Christian man, Jesus. Send me a man who, a Christian, you know, with a C, Christian. Send him to me, Lord Jesus. I'm not going to pray that. Let me tell you why I'm not going to pray that. Because I have read in the Bible, okay, the Bible talks about wolves, what? In sheep clothing, right? The Bible talks in the book of Corinthians about fake apostles and so on and so forth. So you don't think Satan is hearing this request also? Come here. Satan, bring him right here. This is Reverend Tupac. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You know, he's a little rapper, but don't worry about all that, you know. He loved Jesus. In your mind, God has answered you. Right. And you avoided all of the protocols. No character, no nothing. You didn't use as a benchmark the scriptures to identify if this is the person you want to do life with. So you want to go tell your friends. 
Child, God is good. Listen, Jesus sent Tupac. Jesus, Jesus sent Reverend Tupac. Reverend Tupac. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That's what he sent to you. <laughs> so he says, keep your heart with all diligence. Diligence in this case will be the word of God. God's standard. Why? Because when you see what this person isn't matching up to what you know is the word of God, buddy, I don't want them to do with you. This is future problems. This is pain in the making. This is many nights of tears and sorrow and grief. You don't want that. It never comes packaged that way. Never. No, it always come looking really, really nice and really good. All right? Let's go to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. And we're going to look at verse 17 to verse 20. So he says, do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entered into the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought. But those things which proceeded out of the mouth come forth from where? The heart. And they defile or corrupt the man. For out of the heart, listen, for out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts Murders, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. Verse 20. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands that don't defile him. So the word defile here means to corrupt. It also means to change something from its original. The Bible is giving you some awesome revelation here because it's saying if you meet a guy or a girl who have all of these horrible things to say, he is saying to you that this person has been altered from God's original plan or intent for their lives. Now, here's why I'm telling you this. Because the average person would be like, I have a Christian man or, or Christian girl I'm dating. But they have some of the most vile stuff to say in the thing. See, but you will never put the scripture with them because they label themselves, this is a Christian. Not only for sinners, Kevin. So you see what I'm saying, what tradition does to you? Tradition makes you this neo-Nazi. That's what I call you. <laughs> I'm telling you. Because you see things just one way. You don't see God's law as judging everything. So he says, this person who's always with this filthy talk, every time you're in their presence, every example they make is sexual. You invite them to your home, they're looking at your daughter or your son. Or even when you're out with them, they make these off-the-wall remarks. So the Bible is saying, don't cuss them, don't rout them. Let what's coming out of their mouth that the scriptures say has defiled them, let that be evidence to you that they are corrupt. Let that be evidence to you that it's time for you to start running. But I know most people, when they're desperate, well, I could change him. Maybe God sent him, sent me in his life to change him. Trust me, he can change you. <laughs> uh-uh, ask Solomon. Solomon did it a thousand times and he didn't change it once. <laughs> so, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will always reveal the real deal. I don't need nobody trying to impress me with words. I don't need none of that. Like I say, sit back and forensically analyze, and you will see exactly uh, what the deal is. So watch this. So character, what is character? Character is the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. Character is the way someone thinks, feel, and behave. Now, this is awesome because do you know that the Bible also give us the description of character? Yes. Write the scripture down. Proverbs 23 verse 7. As he think it in his heart, so is he. Character. Don't mind what, he, what, he, what he's trying to impress you with. Don't mind what he's saying to you. The Bible says, as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Character will always speak on you, even when you're trying to play it down. Let's go to 
Proverbs chapter 12, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 20. Listen to this now. Deceit, this is key, deceit is in the heart of them that what? Imagine evil. Mm -hmm. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil. I know there's a lady that I used to work with years ago. And this girl was so hateful. And whenever we sit at the table and talk, the, the staff of this, I mean, she would have the most vicious things to say. Very, very, uh, she's very vindictive, very, very spiteful. And come to find out she was also very deceitful. Because when I first read the scripture, my mind went straight to her. And I, I'm like, look at the Bible just coming so alive right here. This girl, who was just so vicious in her speech, and always wishing harm for other people. According to the scripture, it says, deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil. So you're dating a person, you know? And someone got locked up who was very famous. That's good for them. I wish they drove me for 400 years. Too no good. And just going on and on and on. And, and this is consistent with them. Again, if we're using the scripture as a benchmark, he's saying this person will deceive you one day. See, but we don't, we don't want to hear those things. Man. When we, again, when we already fall in love, Johnny Cochran ain't got nothing on us. You hear me? We are the best defense lawyers ever. We will defend them. Jesus could come down and say, no, 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 no. No, Jesus, you need to sit down. You, you will tell Jesus off because when you're already in love, you ain't thinking straight anymore. Now, let's look at this last scripture on why it is so important to, to really focus on the heart. And this is what really, really brought it all together for me. So let's go to... Jeremiah 17 and verse 9. Jeremiah 17 and verse 9. And this here was a game changer for me. Listen to what it says. The heart, my God, is deceitful. Mm -mm. Listen carefully. Above some things. I read that. All things. Didn't end there. Watch what else it says. The heart is deceitful above all things and, and listen, desperately wicked. Who can know it? Now why is this important? And this is why ladies and gentlemen, it is important to analytically, forensically search the heart of a person. But Kevin, I can't see the heart. You're right. So look at these steps I'm giving you. How to assess the heart like I've given you already. So here's what the scripture is saying. I don't care how good Minister Kevin is. I don't care how beautiful the Humphreys. I don't care how beautiful you are. Every day there's a war going on in your heart. When we get a little deeper, the truth is, you can't trust yourself sometimes. So what is this telling us though? This should make you wise up and really be cautious as to who you're giving your heart to. You need to know if their heart right. The Bible said the heart, I, okay, if, if the Bible said the heart is deceitful, it's, it's not the most deceitful thing. I can work with that because there's nothing to contend with it. No. Say shut that down. Uh-uh. He said, it is deceitful above all things. And this is the part that got me. And do you know what desperate is? It's just a desperately wicked. Like, you ever see like a little rude child? <laughs> That's what I see. <laughs> so when I really thought about that, I said, boy, this is serious stuff. Because, you know, even in dating, you're taking, it's like you play Russian roulette. You don't know who or what you're dealing with. Why? Because everybody puts on their best performance. Everyone, nobody, I, I have yet to meet him. I have yet to meet a lady, I went on a date, and she said, oh, oh, Kevin, you know, you're, you're a nice looking guy, you're nice, I just, just want to be open with you, get a little touch of HIV, you know, some herpes here and there, you know, um, I hate to tell the truth, Kevin, can't stand it, uh, I am just the most deceitful human being ever. 
<laughs> now maybe I didn't have the pleasure, maybe you did. <laughs> you know, don't get caught up on the HIV patch, you know, we, we got some meds for that now. <laughs> Who is going to tell you that? And let me tell you why you should take that joke serious. Because of the scripture, the heart is deceitful above all things. And what? Desperately wicked. You think this guy who just want to sleep with you, who just want to get in your pants, is going to tell you that from the get-go? Listen, Mary, let's cut you the chase here. I know, Christian, I can be honest with you right now. I really want to get some goodies. And once I'm done with you, kick you to the curb and that's it for me. Now, if you want to run behind this Jesus fellow, you go ahead, but let me get my groove on and I over here. Just get me out of the way. <laughs> Who, who's going to tell you that? Who? Huh? Who is going to tell you this? See, these are the realities we hate to face. This is what tradition does to you. No, I learned a long time ago. No. In my book, you are guilty of not proven innocent. That's the way I see it, based on that scripture. The heart, the core of who you are, the Bible, this is what God is saying about his creatures, is, is, is deceitful above everything and desperately wicked. So I expect people to lie to me because I lie to them. I ain't different. Yeah. No, who are you ending up about to? See, until you start being real with you, ain't nobody can be real with you. You got to be real with you. Yeah. So when you when you when you're to this these little dinner dates and you need to look over there and say that this is a liar. <laughs> until they prove themselves. Until look at this. When he start talking mess, right. But you know, I've been to Harvard, you liar. You need to get safe. Right. <laughs> now let me once I would have done my research and my findings to come back for it to be true, then okay, right. So that's why I said, me? If I had to date all over again, you are guilty until proven innocent. Yeah. Because according to that scripture, the heart is desperately, sorry, is, is, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. The Bible says, who? Who can know it? Only God can know the heart. Only God can know the heart. So it is up to us now, it is up to us now to let God come in. That's what I'm going to know. How does God come in and lead us by the Holy Spirit to our mate? Now, we just read the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And only God could know it. So you are not capable on your own discovering the person whom God has called for you. I'm going to knock some traditional right now. Some of you may leave. That'll be on y'all. So listen to this. So this is why when I did my teaching on marriage, divorce, and remarriage, of course, I know I had a lot of naysayers, but I don't need to guess safe. But anyway, I said, don't ever in this life pray for a Christian man. Don't ever in this life pray for most definitely an unequally yoked person. Pray for the will of God for your life. You could never go wrong there. Number one, you're reverencing God. You're respecting him that you're my creator. You know the end from the beginning. You're the Alpha and the Omega. The, nothing escapes you. So you being my manufacturer, you would know good and well who is for me. So, you know, people will say, well, you know, you will tell God you want him to be tall, dark, and handsome, and this and that. And that sounds nice. But again, what you are also doing is you're putting up borders and barriers. So in your mind, even though you're asking God to do it, if it don't look like what you're telling God, this is not God. So watch this. I'm going to take you to a story. You can turn there. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 to 7. And this is why you're going to see the way that God leads you to your partner, I want you to hear me, is via the heart. Very rare, if ever, It'll be because of external stuff. It is the heart, God's will for the couples to be married. Even with Lou and Tracy's doing here, when he connected them, it was a heart condition. 
He knew she had what it takes to meet his needs and vice versa. Deidre and I and whoever else is married, and whoever else we would be married. And this is why it's important to connect with the right person for you. You ready for this? You ready for this? Because your connection will determine your direction. Make no mistake. Make no mistake. Your connection will determine your direction. So let's look at this story. I love this story. This is such an awesome story. First Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 to 7. This is what it says. And God said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul? How long will thou mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Fill thy horn of oil and go, I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite. For I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If so, I hear it. He will give me. And the Lord said, Take a half roll with three. And say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. Verse 4. And Samuel did thou, and did that which the Lord spoke, and came to Bethlehem, and the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, Peaceably, and come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourself, and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons, and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass <laughs> when they were come. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked at the right now and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Stop right now. Stop right now. So I'm a stay right now. Samuel is a prophet of God. One of the best prophets Israel ever had. And Samuel looked at the eldest son of Jesse because he had every external feature of the king. God said, hold up, bro. This cloud will be king. Why don't you listen to this very good? He says, and it came to pass, verse 6, and it came to pass when they were come that he looked at Eliab, whatever his name is, and said, surely the Lord's anointed. Samuel, why you call him anointed? Because he looked anointed to you. Why are you calling him oh, a man or woman of God? Because they call themselves a man or woman of God. Watch verse 7. So verse 7 says here, But the Lord said unto Samuel, his greatest prophet. Let's be clear here. This ain't no joker. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not at his countenance or his facial expression or on the height. So why is God telling him this? Because that's how he assessed him. He says, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or the height of his stature, because I have refused him. Mm. For the Lord, watch this, see it not as man see it. For man, look where? But the Lord, look where? Okay, let's go back to my beginning again. You are told. Oh, Shandala Mandala, Mo Bo 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 Bo. Chi 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 Chi, all that stuff, right? Father, I pray, Lord, send him, send him, send him a bull. Lord, he ain't gonna have two bull legs. At least let one be curved. Let's see, says one, and make sure he's a man of God. Okay, the minute you just did, you just put God in the box right there. So, your God's best will be passing you every day, but in your mind, this can be God. What God is saying in this previous scripture that I just read, he says, my intent for you 
the connection initially will be from the heart. So even though on the outside, it may not look like y'all are compatible, from the outside, it may not look like y'all are supposed to be together, but trust me, the day this connection comes together, watch what's going to happen. I remember Deidre told me, right? You can tell how unruly she was. So anyway, <laughs> Deidre said, her aunts said, why don't you date Kevin? Kevin is such a nice guy. I don't want Kevin. He's holy and boring. <laughs> so you see what I'm saying, right? God given you. <laughs> God dangling him right here. <laughs> She threw a whole Samuel on them. <laughs> I want him. He bored. He does see that. Hey, look at the brother hat. <laughs> Whoever thought we'd have been doing ministry together? Because God connects you from the heart. You may not be able to see it, and it will never make sense to you. But he connects you from the heart. So I love what he said to Samuel. He said, Samuel, listen, let me be clear with you, buddy. I, God, I don't look at men's continents. I don't look at their statue. I don't look at their degree. I don't look at their bank account. None of that. I don't even care what they call themselves or who they claim to be. I am on a consistent basis analyzing their heart. Right there I'm looking at. And now I have determined this is not the one to be king. So when you read the rest of the story, the Bible says that Samuel went to Jesse. He said, man, look here. You got any other turn around, yeah? He said, yeah, I got a little peasy head boy outside there. <laughs> running our sheep all day. You can check him out. <laughs> so the Bible says, and this is the word that the Bible used. Say, when he went outside, there was this ruddy, this is exactly what the Bible says, this ruddy boy, this little David fella, running around, sheep all day, out running sheep all day. I mean, the sheep racing all day. <laughs> this can be the king. But what God said later on about this man, who would, before we got there, the same man who was married to eight women, never divorced none. The same man who committed adultery with Uriah's wife, got her pregnant, killed Uriah. What did God say? He is a man after my own heart. So that's why I'm telling you, I don't preach messages of condemnation because I'm telling you, you don't know how God sees these people. If you figure they're doing wrong, pray for them. You don't know. You don't know. You, you, in fact, you could be judging them and you could be doing the same thing in your life in a different area. In fact, the Bible says, uh, I forget how the scripture goes, but it's basically saying, anyway, so much words, pray for someone, at least you be caught up in the same thing or something of that nature. So if God could say, all of this David did, so what was God really saying? That was not David's character. No. See, character, true character is consistency. That's what it is. True character is, even when I don't want to perform for character, it can make me perform anyway, because this is who I am. And God said, after this killer, <laughs> that's what he is, adulterer, deceiver, liar, after all of this, God says, this David right here, who all are you all judging? He's a man after my own heart. Now, let's, let's, let's go back a little bit. You don't think God knew all of that from the day he picked him? Right. You know, one of the prayers we should pray, Father God, teach us to assess from the heart like you do. Yeah. We will make better decisions. We will have better friends. We'll have a better life as opposed to assessing and judging people from the outside, right? So God connects from the heart, and like I said, your connection will determine uh, your direction. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25 is very clear, and it says there's a way unto you. That would always seem, but at the end of your way would be destruction. That scripture is a prophecy, believe it or not. It's telling you in advance, the, the, entire, the entire Bible is prophecy, actually. It's telling you the end from where? The beginning. <coughs> so God could never try to negotiate with you. He said, now Kevin, you could take my way, 
and enjoy this, or you could take this week. I ain't going to push you. But you could do what you want to do. So at the end of the day, that's why I said, even though Satan was able to put things in the heart of those Ananias and Sapphira and Judas Iscariot, they had to make the decision. You see, they had to make the decision. So Proverbs 16.25 said, as a way unto man that may seem right, but the end of that way is death and destruction. Proverbs 19.21, it says that there are many devices or ideas in a man's heart, but only the counsel of God shall prevail. What God has counseled himself on concerning you before the foundation of the world, that's what you ought to be praying for. Father God, I know that you have a plan for my life. And inclusive in that plan is a mate for me. In fact, your word declares in Genesis 2 and 18 that it's not good or beneficial for a man to be alone. But you will create for me someone that is compatible, a help meet, a help mate. Someone that is suitable for me. Someone that who you're going to connect me with initially from the well? Heart. Not looks, not titles, none of that stuff. It's going to be connected uh, from the heart. Another scripture I want you to look at is uh, Ephesians 1. Did you spoke about earlier? Ephesians 1 verses 3 to 4. Blessed be the Lord our God who has already, past tense, blessed us with not some but all, all spiritual, all spiritual blessings. So the scripture is telling us that everything that we'll ever have physically on this earth in its origin, they're what? Spiritual. Whatever we receive as a physical blessing is the second part of that blessing. But the blessing was always in place. You connecting with that blessing will be determined on who you connect with. In other words, you could connect with the wrong person and take you in the opposite direction of the blessings God has already had in place for you. I meet a lot of people like that. Life is hard for them. But it's only hard because they operate in disobedience. Isaiah 46.10, God declares all things from, from the beginning. He determines the end from the beginning. So, I mean, who, who better would you want to instruct you? I mean, let's be real. I mean, if, if, you, if you know everything, if you know what my outcome is going to be, why can't I just listen to you? Well, one of the reasons that is not going to happen is because there's not much emphasis on it. And again, even when it comes to the church, when it comes to, not all, some pastors and so on, they make themselves to be the final authority. If pastor didn't tell you, then it ain't so. And let me show you some mess up, because I've been in these environments. A lady, uh, there's a guy in the church who they want to make lay minister, so they tell him you need to get married. You can't be no minister up in here if you ain't married. So they force some check on him, you know, now, let me know what that also means. Now, whatever problems they have, don't come here, sweetie, because we can take your side. Because we're looking at the reputation of the church. But pastor, he just drop kick me every day. And? <laughs> well, he put me in the headlock in a figure four suplex. <laughs> See, woman of God, you're ungrateful. <laughs> you're ungrateful. You could have been dead. God still got you here. <laughs> this is the nonsense. So this is how you know. It's another reason how you know you're part of a cult. You're laughing why make many people like this. They feel luck. They're told if you leave, God hate divorce. It's a sin to leave this man of God. You could imagine this nigga beating you. I said, nigga, this nigga beating you. <laughs> this dude beating you, nigga. This dude will bring you black and blue, and you gotta stay there. You gotta come to service with the big glasses on, dark, the big hat on. You know, you can't look up because the image of the sacred institution must be protected. I told you before, but tradition, you don't want that. So don't pray for a Christian man. Don't pray for an unequally yoked man. Pray for the will of God concerning your life. Why? Because just like in the case of Samuel, you don't know how they're going to come. You know how many testimonies I've heard, and I'm not, and whenever I teach this, people take it the wrong way. I never encourage nobody to go there seeking an unequally yoked person. I'm not telling them that. 
I'm saying to you, be open for whatever the Holy Spirit brings. If it was left up to Samuel, he would have never picked David. So I have to put my feelings, my tradition, all that on the side. If I want the fullness of what God has in place for me. If not, I can call being guided by tradition, doing the will of God. And it's far from it. All right? So we're about to wrap up right here, right? So who do we look for? Some of the signs to look for. And this is how we're going to become analytical now. Some of the signs. I'm going to give you five of them. The first one is a good man. Of course, whenever we use the word man here, it's unisex, man or woman. A good man. Okay? I'm going to give you some scriptures. A good man. Psalms 37, verses 23 to verse 24. Psalms 37, verse 23. Okay, so Psalms 37, verse 23 to verse 24. Listen, this is why you need to have a good man. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you five type people the Bible requires that you are to look for because each of them, their qualities are coming along with them that is leading you to that right place. And if these are your standards, you are more likely to connect heart-wise to the person whom God has called for you. I, I made it clear, heart-wise. I say that because if you still got in here, they got to be handsome, all this other stuff, you're looking for trouble. Okay, so Psalms 37, verse 23. This is why you want to connect with a good person. The steps of a good man, who is it being ordered by? Now, isn't this important? Because how did I say God connect you? Right. So wouldn't it be God that's going to be leading to the right heart to you? Right. So they say the steps of a good man are who? Ordered by the Lord. And he delighted in his way. So what that means is every time that person gets to the, the, the next spot that God has for them, God is basically rejoicing. Go, Kevin. Go. DJ was trying to run. You got to now. <laughs> right? <laughs> now watch this now. Verse 24. Though he fall, this is powerful. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord uphold him with his hand. Now think of David. Think of David. Though David fell, God said, come here, I know your heart. I know your heart. Let's go. I can punish you, but I know your heart. So you see, a good man steps out ordered by the Lord. The Lord delighted in his way. Even though this man will fall, the Bible says that God promised he will bring this man back up. Psalms 112, verse 5. Psalms 112, verse 5. And listen to what it says. A good man showeth favor and lend it. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Now, wouldn't you want to be with a good person like that? So you see, the word, the phrase, a good, a good man in the Bible, is now giving all of the attributes of this person. And, and each one of these things, and I'm going to call off you, write it down. You can always do a Google search on them, particularly in the book of Proverbs. Just Google good man and wise man like I'll be giving you. And watch the attributes of this person. And the underlying tone you're going to find in all of them. This is why you need to connect with them. They will always be a benefit to the person they're about to connect with. In other words, we will come together in synergy. And produce more as a union, as a couple, than we were doing as individuals. In other words, if you are married now to someone, or you're about to be married, and you are producing less as a union than you were doing as an individual, you married a Satan, Satan best. <laughs> Satan pull one on you. <laughs> Let me give you these other scriptures. You can write it down. Proverbs 12, verse 2, and Proverbs 13, verse 22. The next one, a faithful man. Oh my God, I love this one. See, that's what I'm telling you with these here. You don't have to go up to them, excuse me, sir. I, I like you, but hold on one minute. Are you faithful? Are you committed? Are you? No, no, no. No, you sit back. You observe. 
Why do you say character? Even when they don't want to talk on themselves, they can talk. If you see them being faithful without anyone trying to induce it, that's good. If you see them being diligent, prudent, good, wise, nobody is around, but this is who their character is. That'll, that'll be a good potential. So the next one is a faithful man. I like this one. Proverbs 28, verse 20. Proverbs 28, verse 20. Proverbs 20, verse 20 says, A faithful man, I like this, shall abound with blessings. Now, let me help some of y'all who figure y'all ain't going to marry no broke man. Find him who's faithful. Because the Bible says, A faithful man, God will see to it that he abound with blessings. I think I'm a perfect example of that. DJ will tell you when she met me, I was broke like Ten Commandments, right? <laughs> Yeah. So I'm sure you all heard me tell this story before, right? So one day we was dating. And I, uh, I told her I needed to get some money for me off my ATM card. My, I gave her my ATM. I might have had $100. I don't know. Maybe. So I said, let me see what I ought to do. going to be like when she see this whole loot I got up in here, right? <laughs> so I told her to take her, what, 50 bucks something like that? 25 so whatever. So she came back. She didn't say a word. She said, see the money, yeah? I was shocked. Now, for me, I just wanted you to know what you was getting into. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when we got married, she'll tell you this. When we got married, things soared. Literally soared. And that's why I tell you, God is going to connect you from the heart. I, I, I would have, she probably would have never seen that. You know, one day me and Kevin will be doing well. One day we will retire early. I didn't see it either. And that's what I tell you, the connection from the heart will produce stuff you will... She said a scripture earlier, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those that love him. So it's telling me things are already in place. Your obedience now will determine if you'll get those things that are in place. Some people may say, well, uh, I don't know if I am even worthy of no guy. I've already slept with so many people and so on. That's your mind. That's your view. God looking at you from the heart. And people have a, I tell you, I counsel people, they have a tough time accepting that. Why? Because the label of the world, use a this, use a that. And this is something that really, really is repulsive to me how some churches are just, I mean, a list condemners. Make people feel as if there's no hope. But anyway, so when God connect you from the heart, there's so much in there. So a faithful person, a person who's committed, the Bible said they will abound with blessings. So Deidre and I, I was able to retire at age 48 in 2019. Yeah, I was, I was going to be 49 in September of 2019. So I, I, I left FedEx. I was to FedEx for, if I'd stayed there four more months, I'd have been there for 33 years, right? So she keep asking me, if I think she'd retire, I say, you're not ready for it yet. Now, she thought I didn't want home to harass me. And that was part of the problem, right? Right. <laughs> right. I said to her, because, and the reason why I said it, because I know how much she loved the job. She loved doing what she did. I said, Deidre, trust me. You can know when it's time. So, of course, when the time came, she had no qualms about it. She retired. And, again, we were able to, our homes debt-free, all, listen, though, all of this happened within the last, what, three, four years? <coughs> right, three years, right. Everything that was lacking before was sped up, debt-free. Why? Because God is leading by the heart. I know the plans that I have towards you. They are good and not evil to bring you to an expected end. See, this is why I'm saying this over because you need to stop looking at people from the outside. And look at what God got for you in this person. What this connection is going to bring. For the most part, we're thinking, well, you know, he ain't that cute or she ain't that pretty. And my friends can say, I got this old, ugly woman. No. <laughs> Your friends ain't got to love this people. You, you do. So in Proverbs 20, verse 20, it says that a faithful man should abound with blessing. The other one is Proverbs 20, verse 6. And it says that a, a, a faithful man, this is powerful, is rare. 
I got to paraphrase it. Rare and hard to find. This ain't something you could go out there and pick up. That scared me when I read that. Again, it's like playing Russian roulette. You're going out there, oh Lord, let me find this faithful person. It's very rare to find. So, so far we got a good man. So far we got a faithful man. The next one, a diligent man or woman. I like this one. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4. And it says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent make it rich. So again, I get my back to my original point. While you might not have married Richie Rich, if you marry a diligent person, the potential to become rich is there. So you see how you're shifting from the world standard of these things to the godly one? So this is why a diligent, a diligent person is a person who's thorough. A person who's honest, who isn't going to try to uh, find a shortcut or take underhand deals and all this other stuff. They want to do it the right way and do it the right way the first time. I'm just going to give you these other scriptures to write it down. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 24. And Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29. The next one is a wise man or a wise person. This is powerful. So let's go to Proverbs 14, verse 16. Proverbs 14, verse 16, it says, A wise man feareth and departed from evil. So if you have a wise husband or a wise wife or a wise partner, that's good. They want nothing to do with evil. They want to stay for their fair God and they don't want nothing to do with no drugs, no nothing. They ain't into cheating and side pieces. They don't want nothing to do with those things. Because they have already know that these things, at the end of the day, don't part with anything good. Proverbs 29, verse 11. Proverbs 29, verse 11 says, A fool utters all his thoughts, but a wise man keep it until afterwards. You see, you see the quality of these people? You know, some people, they got to go tit for tat, butter for pot, fat, kill my dog, I kill your cat. No. <laughs> no. The wise man will let you run on. The wise man will have you talking. He can just sit right there and listen. And the Bible says afterwards. What does he do? He's analyzing. He's seeing... What, what, is, what is worth even answering? Right. Right. So you see why you want a wise person? So you can write these two down. Proverbs 1 verse 5. And Proverbs 16 verse 14. Proverbs, Proverbs 16 verse 14. And our final one. A prudent man. Now, with everything I've given you so far, prudence sums it all up. And ultimately, all of these attributes that I've given you, the underlying tune is this. These people always seek the benefit of others. Let me tell you, you will never fit in this category, selfish people. Never. In fact, if there were selfish people in here right now, they'd leave this place because they don't want to hear this. Because it requires putting interest to someone else and taking the limelight off of them and focusing on someone else. And you need someone in your life who's going to see you as priority. Who's going to respect you. You know, I had a boss one time. I, 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 I think this guy was mental. He was married. And he used to bring his side piece on the job. Yeah. You ready for the, this piece? It's a question. I, I, I couldn't get that because I, his wife would come there sometimes. Yeah, she would come not while the side piece was there. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> No, oh, that would have been messy. No, 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 no. No, no. So, I never could understand because everybody, like, accepted it. 
And I, I could, and again, I didn't claim to be no super spiritual, but to me, as a leader, as a leader, this is a horrible message to be sending to your subordinates. How would I ever respect you? Well, I told him one time. You never get my respect. Not on this, never. So, so to me, people don't understand that their behavior, like I said earlier, is emitting their character. So a prudent man, I like this one. Watch this. Proverbs 19, verse 14. Proverbs 19, verse 14. Watch this. Proverbs 19. Okay, Proverbs 19, verse 14 says, listen to this carefully, okay? Houses and riches are inheritance by fathers. You can inherit this kind of stuff. But what you can't inherit is a prudent woman. The Bible calls her a prudent wife. Watch this though. Houses and riches are inherited by fathers, and a prudent wife cometh only from the Lord. How? How? How come? Because when God connects you, he's going to connect you from the where? That's right. You will never do it. Because first of all, you can't do it. You don't know what in their heart. You ain't got time to be looking at nothing. You, you just looking at the outside. So it says a prudent wife. Now, if you want to pray for a prudent wife, go ahead. <laughs> don't pray for no Christian wife. People get offended when I say that, you know. I say, but stop being offended and then go marry one. And you'll see exactly what I'm saying to you. <laughs> mm, go marry them. I see them all the time. Holy than thou. Dresses and need their foot. <laughs> they trip down. Can't walk right. Big hat on. Power, they stop the power every 30 seconds. <laughs> Hallelujah, Shandala, Mandala, all this. And no fruit. No fruit in there, like none. Zero. No fruit in their life, period. None. Excuse me, you've been having the Holy Spirit for the past 30 seconds. When, did you, when last you brought someone to Christ? <laughs> Christ, who he is? <laughs> Bible says, know them by their what? Fruit. Proverbs 13, verse 16. You can write this down. Proverbs 14, verse 18. And I'm going to read this one. Proverbs 14, verse 18 says, The simple inherit folly or foolishness, but the prudent are crowned with what? Knowledge. This is powerful. Why is this powerful? Because the scripture, go a little deep here. If a person is crowned with knowledge, it speaks of deliverance. Here's why. Proverbs 11, 9b. Through what? Shall who be delivered? Right. So if this scripture is telling you the prudent is crowned, so it's not like this person already been through all the deliverance, they done cleanse up, they done free all them spirits, they done boom. Now, let God lead you to who you're supposed to be with. So when I read that, that really stuck out to me. The prudent. What does the word prudent mean? The word prudent is a person who always thinking ahead. Mm -hmm. A prudent man, that's why it's good to have a prudent man or woman, because that man, he is always going to think way, even though there's a decision to be made here, his decision isn't based on what's here. His decision, he have foresight. I could spend this money now, but up the road, we ain't have no money. No, baby, we can't spend it now. <laughs> I ain't throwing no shit. <laughs> so a prudent man or a prudent woman always assess the future before they make a decision. Proverbs 16, verse 21. And then Proverbs 18, verse 15. And these last two. 
And this is it for us. Proverbs 22, verse 3. And Proverbs 27, verse 12. Now, we can end with this right here. The two scriptures, that just the two last scriptures I just gave you. These two scriptures says the exact same thing. And I always tell my students, whenever you see something is reiterated in scripture, it speaks of the utmost importance. So, in those two scriptures, it says this. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hides himself. Some translation says, and prepares himself or even withdraws himself. What's this? But the simple pass on and they are punished. So let's unpack this and we're going to finish right here. What is the difference between the prudent and the simple, and the simple will be, be a person who is not prudent. Well, foresight. Yeah. And this is why prophecy is so important, because prophecy gets you to see ahead of what's coming and make decisions. For example, people tell us every day, Christ is coming, get safe. So don't be shocked if Christ come and you ain't safe. <laughs> right? So, and this scripture is telling us the prudent man foreseeth the evil. He sees the trouble. Now, the best example I could give you of this, it reminds me when I was growing up. I, I, I lived in the Turks and Caicos. My, both of my parents are from there. But I originally was living with my, my grandmother on my mother's side. She's a very strict woman. Very strict. And I say strict? Paranoid strict. She was a prophecy church woman. They call it jumper church back then. And all you ever knew was church. No play in nothing. You ain't playing with no friends, none of that. So we had these neighbors next door. Well, not really next door, but like about two houses away from us. And they were always having fun over there. All the kids outside playing, man, and I wanted to be a part of that. And the reason why I wanted to be a part of that was because when my mother sent me to live with her, because it was very, uh, Turks Island back then wasn't as developed as it is now. So we had to use like oil lamps and stuff. So coming from the city, one like me, that was like a real culture shock for me. But anyway, she would always tell us, don't you ever go over there by so-and-so. I don't want to catch you playing with them. I don't want you to eat from them. If I, if I ever, and she used to stress this, I will murder you. <laughs> Claire. <laughs> and that bothered me. Because I'm like, this woman don't want us to have no fun, man. So this is what foresight is. My grandmother, who'd been around long enough, saw what that family produced. So foresight, after going in the future, she said, I don't want this for Kevin. So how do I prevent that from happening? To keep him away from it. I lived long enough to see who was in kill, Locked up, horrible relationships, multiple baby daddies and so on. Now mind you, these things happen to everybody, but what I'm saying to you, you see how things can be avoided. So the prudent man, and this is why you need a prudent husband or a prudent wife, what encompasses all of what I just told you. Because they're always looking out not just for themselves, but for the benefit of those who they're involved with. And many of you, probably at some point in your life, experience a man or a woman who was selfish. That should have been the first red flag for you. Somebody wants to say they want to get married to you or they're looking to have you as a, a lifelong partner. And the only uh, words that you hear frequently, I, I, me, I, me, no we, no us, run, run. Narcissists, y'all know them, right? Mm. I used to date one. Yeah. And let me tell you something. These people could school Satan. <laughs> Satan said, no, I didn't know those tricks. Where you get it from? 
Are you serious? <laughs> Stay got Satan scratching his head. This. <laughs> Listen to me carefully, yeah? I, I dated a narcissist, man. And I said, I, I think I was, I was very close to having brain surgery. <laughs> I, a narcissist, there's no human. There is no human. There's no human. A narcissist, without a shadow of a doubt, has to be demonically possessed. A person who could who could try to alter your reality and do their endeavor best to convince you. Anyway, that's all the story. So anyway, listen, I'm gonna end with this, right? I'm gonna end with this. And I said it's gonna touch on this, but I'm done. I'm finished my notes here because Deidre said, ever you say that, you don't ever put this down so I know you're finished. I'm done, Deidre. I'm done. So I just want to cover this last topic and I'm done with it. I'm talking about a spiritual spouse. I just want to do a summary here. Just a summary because a lot of you may be, uh, one of these things may be attached to you and you may not even be knowing of this because I've met a lot of people who are saying, well, Kevin, these things that you're talking about, I mean, I'm not, I, I believe I have these things, but it's like, for whatever reason, like men reject me. Like I feel rejected or blah, 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 whatever the case may be, or men will date me for a certain period, and then out of nowhere, no argument, no nothing, they just pick up and leave. Next thing I know, they're getting married to somebody else a couple of months later. What's the reason for this? Well, number one, a lot of people don't believe in spirit spouses. To their detriment, of course. They don't believe in it, but it's very, very real. And a spirit spouse is really a demon. It's an evil spirit that's attached to a person to keep away prospects from this person, particularly their uh, intended mate. Now, there are two primary ways that the spirit comes into a person's life. The most common way is through sexual intercourse and dreams. A lot of people who have sexual dreams, uh, these are like the primary way. Now, once the spirit is on you, like with every other spirit, you don't see it. So, Let's say I had a spirit spouse. While I don't see the spirit spouse, the job of the spirit spouse is whenever I do meet someone, the spirit is influencing that person to reject me. But I don't know this. So the evidence of this, when you have this, is that no matter where you go, you're disliked. You did nothing. Nothing at all. You could go China. So you come on the job. <laughs> you don't even know me. <laughs> right? So what, what should get you thinking? How is it I left the Bahamas, I left the U.S. with this problem? I'm here in a country where they don't even have my culture and they just rejecting me. So that right there should tell you it's a spirit. That should tell you right there. Another way it comes in, I said through sexual intercourse, but through molestation, incest. Yeah. Shall I kind of talk on it a little bit? Now, what's so devious about this that when it happens, you don't know. You don't know when you get up, you're walking away with this spirit, this spirit attached to you. And the spirit is going to determine the course of your life. Just like a spirit of divorce. And that's why I tell people all the time, if you come from a history of divorce in your family, break the curse. Because the purpose of the divorce spirit is to ensure that you connect with a person that's going to secure a divorce at the end of this journey. So these are the things you ought to be looking at. But the spiritual spouse, I'm telling you, that needs to be dealt with. Why? Because the, 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 one of the main reasons of this spirit is to eat up your time. That's why you find people like 45, 50, 60 ain't married yet. Yeah. And then they don't want to be married, you know. Now they'll tell you, because they shame, hey, I am not interested in these no good guys. They too no good. No, no. They're not interested in you. <laughs> but it's a spirit, and it's blocking them. And the spirit is enhanced. You ready for this? If the person is heavily engaged in masturbation, 
You're feeding the spirit. Kevin, what do you mean by that? I don't, I don't, I don't think masturbation is wrong. Mm-mm. The Bible tells you to cast out all imagination and everything that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ, right? Right. And when you're thinking about masturbation, I'm sure you're not thinking about scriptures. <laughs> I'm, not the, I'm not the brightness, I mean. <laughs> I'm sure John 3 and 16 don't come to mind. <laughs> right? Work with me. <laughs> no, right? So what am I saying to you? So where's it coming from? No, the heart. I've just been telling you that. The heart. The heart. So you watch. Those who masturbate a lot, and one of the things they're going to have, difficulty in relationship also, but they're going to also have sleep paralysis. Mm. They're going to feel stuff holding them down at night. So the point I'm making here is that in your quest to find your right person, deal with you first, like Dijoda said. Look at you and deal with you. Think about the generational curses. I come from a family of divorce on my mother's side. Couldn't escape that. And this is why I say, if someone had told me this, if someone had told me this, again, I go right back to the, to, the, to the traditional church. Nobody tells you this. Nobody says, now, hold on now. You be coming here for consulate? Tell me something. You got who all divorce? You know something? I, I even give the, the doctors even more credit. Because if you go to a doctor right now and you say, uh, I don't have an opinion. So tell me something. Uh, your mom, your dad. Because they understand uh, not only the process of elimination, but they also understand sequences and patterns. And only the church, not all, expect you to be perfect at the first go. But if, if someone who truly understands these things could say to you, now, Mary and John, I know you all love each other. Now, John, you come from a family of divorce. Did you all break this curses yet? Guys, what curse you talking about? That's you don't mess up right now. So because says, this is mine. Once we fall in love, we get married and we live happily after. No, these are going to become future impediments in your life. Now, Mary, I ain't judging you. But through your admission, you've had over six partners. I ain't judging you, baby. What I'm saying to you, though, you might have picked up something along the way spiritually. Did you deal with this? Because that spirit will wait till you get married and roll up on you with some desires that will not be for your husband. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for your knowledge. We thank you for your understanding. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus of every soul in here, especially the singles, Lord. I outfit them with the whole arm of God, their helmet of salvation, their breastplate of righteousness, their shield of faith, their sword, which is the living word of God. I pray for the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And I pray, Father God, Lord, that you would excavate from their heart anything that is not of you. You've said in your word that you will pluck up out of them everything that you did not plant. I pray, Father God, that they would be willing to be led as you guide them by their hearts to their ordained mates. Father God, I know that you have someone appointed for them. I know a part of the plans that you have had put in place for them. It is inclusive of their partners. So I pray, Father God, Lord, that they would not make the mistake others have made. They would not uh, make the mistakes that their parents have made or whomever else. I pray over those who are saddled through bloodline, ancestral curses, that those curses be destroyed, uprooted, and that they would not become victims of these evils, victims of these patterns, that they would not become a statistic, but instead, Father God, Lord, that they would be triumphant and that they would be uh, successful in their relationships. Father, I break all curses, hex spells, everything that has been spoken over their lives by their fathers, parents, loved ones, guardians, Father, whatever has happened in the past, whether incest, uh, violation sexually, or whatever it is, Father, what I pray, I pray that you would soften their heart to be forgiving, and they would let it go and allow you to heal them so that they can move on with their lives. Your word declares that we have all sinned and come short of, fall short of the glory of God. So I pray right now that this conference will be a conference of success, that the information that was released by every presenter Father God will be duly noted and that we will not just be hearers of your word, but also doers. So Father, we bless you. Father, we honor you. Father, we praise you. 
Let me ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I have one announcement to make. If anyone wants to be baptized, please raise your hand. And Tracy and Lou will uh, get the count because they just need to know how much will be. And, uh, <laughs> okay, beautiful. All right, guys, my job is done yet. Yeah? You guys have a beautiful evening. <laughs>